Luck is an arbitrary concept in most series, and usually is used as a tool to get the hero out of trouble, or if the hero has bad luck, into trouble. For the most part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventures run, luck doesn't seem to play too much of a role. It's mostly just coincidences that are given explanations, or they're just accepted by the general audience. Though, Araki did decide at one point during the run of Steel Ball Run to not only focus on the concept of luck, but on its effects, through the character of Poco Loco and his stand, Hey Ya. <laughs> Poco Loco is actually a very interesting case when we look at the entirety of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That's because he's a prominent character in his part, but he isn't an antagonist, he isn't even a minor antagonist, isn't an ally, and doesn't care about the main plot. In fact, Poco Loco is someone with their own personal goals and luck on his side, and honestly, Johnny and Gyro and President Funny Valentine are actually very lucky that they never had to face him in a true fight, though we'll discuss that more after we learn the meaning behind his name. And speaking of the name Poco Loco, it's actually kind of interesting, as it's a modified callback to the character of Poco from Phantom Blood, but the name itself is a reference to an American rock band called Poco, but Poco Loco itself is either a play on Poco's Poco album, meaning Poco Poco being translated as Poco Loco, or the Elaine Burton song of Poco Loco in the Coco. Now the Poco album for the band Poco is the second album that they ever released, but it was the first album in which they had their first replacement, which they would have many throughout their run. This could be represented in Poco Loco being a replacement of a Phantom Blood character as he is the Poco equivalent in his universe. And then you also have the hit single from Poco that was You Better Think Twice, a song that was featured on the Poco album and is about a man telling his lover that he will give her the world, but only if she completely trusts him and if she only thinks twice before leaving him. Which plays into Poco Loco having to rely on Hey Ya for advice during his race, as he needs to trust Hey Ya, and Hey Ya will give him the world, basically giving him the exact advice that he needs to race effectively. Now another source of the name Poco Loco is possibly from the song Poco Loco in the Coco by Elaine Burton, an American singer most popular in the 1950s for her song, If Only I Knew You Were Coming, I'd Bake You a Cake. But on the B side of that record, which blew up in sales, was the song Poco Loco and the Coco, as records shipped with two sides, one with one song, the other with another. This made Poco Loco and the Coco just as popular sales-wise by default, so the song itself was just as popular as her biggest song. And now, the song itself isn't too special or significant, it's just a normal love song about falling so in love with someone that you slightly go a little crazy, like you're going Poco Loco and the Coco, or the Coconut, or the Brain. This could have been the origin for Poco Loco's name purely based on the popularity of the song itself, but also, Poco Loco also seems very single-minded during the race. So he is Poco Loco in the Coco. The themes of the song fit him. Or maybe it's just a combination of both Poco's Poco album and Poco Loco in the Coco, but main point of Poco Loco's name is based on the fact that he has a crazy approach to racing and how he's very wild and out there with things and he just seems to luck out. He is a little crazy, or Poco Loco. Now, Poco Loco as a character in Steel Ball Run is fantastic. He doesn't actually have much of a major effect on the overall plot of Steel Ball Run, but yet somehow manages to stay relevant. He's not only the winner of the Steel Ball Run race, but also manages to luck his way through a lot of the race's biggest obstacles, and all of his opponent's tricks. This is because of what he claims to be his one in a million luck. He learned about this luck when he visited a fortune teller and she told him at this specific moment, after he had just lost a huge gambling spree, he was at his Tenshu Satsu, or his lowest point. But she told him, with his Tenshu Satsu, a great fortune of luck would come his way in the next coming month. Which just happened to be the month that the Steel Ball Run race would be taking place. This inspired Poco Loco to actually join the Steel Ball Run race because he saw the big prize pool in front of him, and he decided that with his luck on the rise, he knew he could win this. And he also felt a strong force guiding him there. Was this the arbitrary Lady of Luck leading Poco Loco down the path of victory, or was it something else? Well, actually a combination of both, but to understand that, I need to discuss Poco Loco's stand, and the source of most of his good fortune, Hey Ya. Hey Ya is a monkey or primate-shaped stand with a robotic doll-like design. His head is full of braided green hair, and it appears that he is sentient as well, speaking his mind to Poco Loco and trying to keep him motivated and going. Stats-wise, Hey Ya is actually very lacking. He's very unimpressive. He has an E in destructive power, E in speed, E in range, B in durability, 
E in Precision, and E in Developmental Potential. Now, Hey Yeah has a questionable amount of abilities, as it's not certain whether something is or isn't part of the stand's ability, but Hey Yeah has at least two known abilities, and the first is Cheer On. Hey Yeah will grab onto the back of his host and whisper ASMR style into their ears to encourage them. This appears to some as just Poco Loco's own confidence personified in cheering himself on and giving him words of encouragement. And honestly, given what stands are, that isn't actually too far off of what it might actually be. But when we get to the second ability, it's when we start to realize that Hey Ya is actually more than just a personification of good emotions. And that second ability is actually something you're probably more interested in, given that you already knew the first ability, given that just about everyone talks about Hey Ya like this. Hey Ya's second ability is precognition. And before you comment below, at least hear me out. Hey Ya has the ability, almost like Epitaph, to peer into the near future and see all possible solutions to a certain event and pick out the best possible solution. Now these events are not destined to happen if Poco Loco doesn't choose to follow the path that Heya recommends. As you see, Epitaph was a guaranteed this will happen, except for that one time, where Heya is just like, here are all the possible solutions that will happen, which actually kind of plays into the multiple universe theory that gets brought up later in the series. So Heya actually kind of fits the themes of the overall Steel Ball run. So Yes, Heya has actually shown multiple times throughout the story to see upcoming events that will happen and gives this information to Poco Loco. And this isn't like a situation where Poco Loco knew about these upcoming events and just didn't remember them personally and had his consciousness bring these back up. These are events that he could not have predicted. Events like the Cow Corpse and the Blizzard, which both happen and Poco Loco reacts to them with surprise and shock. Both of these situations play out almost exactly the same too. Heya tells Poco Loco that there's a thing coming up. Poco Loco doesn't understand what he's talking about, but feels at ease because of the original first ability. So he puts his luck to the test, and fortune guides him through, and the future events take place. Poco Loco's horse trips and catches a cow corpse, allowing him to go downhill smoothly and get some rest on his horse. And also, Heya sees a blizzard coming, and it hits right in front of Johnny and Gyro, causing a collapse in front of them and allowing Poco Loco to, in theory, take the lead. But given that Johnny and Gyro are shown to create shortcuts through everything in life, even predestined events, Johnny and Gyro actually take the lead, putting them ahead of fate itself. And honestly, it, I think it's one of the greatest scenes because Heya acts like he's like physically shaken, like what the fuck just happened? And Johnny and Gyro literally change their fate by working together and help build the themes of their friendship. It's actually a very great scene, including that Heya is a precog. It's almost like when Giorno defeats Epitaph, especially when you look at when it happens and how it's its own specific chapter cut off from everything else in the story. And along with confirming this precognition, I will also confirm that yes, Yes, Hey Ya has absolutely nothing to do with Poco Loco's luck. Or in other words, Hey Ya does not make Poco Loco lucky. That is more related to the fortune teller and the idea of Lady Luck and Steel Ball Run and how she rides with those who have confidence and abandon those who aren't. Hey Ya is more a product of Poco Loco's luck than a source of it. And from what we see while racing, Poco Loco does unlock his stand. He was lucky before it was unlocked and he was lucky after it got unlocked. And it was unlocked in actually a very weird way appearing to him. It's actually like a really cool scene. I kind of want to see it animated someday. But when Hey Ya enters Poco Loco's body and makes him more confident, it shows us that it belongs to him. It's his stand. And it's a natural stand, too. He didn't even need to pass through the Devil's Palm to unlock it. And given that it's a natural stand, we already know that it's significantly more powerful than some other stands that we've seen through the series, as natural stands have always been shown to be some of the strongest stands that we know. But we can also discern from the fact that Hey Ya comes from Poco Loco, a very lazy and gambling-addicted type of person, that the stand itself would take on those personality traits, especially since Hey Ya has a personality. So the stand itself appears to be lazy and hides its true potential. The two of them are perfectly fit for each other to have this outstanding ability that they're too lazy to really take advantage of. So Hey Ya gets its name from the Outcast song Hey Ya, a song released in 2003 while the Outcasts were white hot in the music industry. This allowed it to climb the billboards almost instantly and become a number one hit. Now, what's interesting is actually about the song and how people remember it being like this really happy, cheery beat, but the the song itself actually carries a very depressing message of a loveless relationship, and the idea of covering up this sad scenario with a cheery beat actually is addressed in the song itself with lyrics like, y'all don't even want to hear me, you just want to dance, and I'm just being honest, and I'm just being
being honest. In fact, listening to the song over and watching the music video along with it, the song itself actually covers up the sadness and issues with life with upbeat falsehood happiness, ignoring any possible chance that bad has even happened. This fake happiness is represented in multiple ways, with people either cheering over the sad talk, people ignoring characters, or people just constantly cutting to this one happy guitarist. Like, the song, it's actually very well constructed. And now when you apply this to Hey Yeah The Stan, the real ability of the stand is covered up by the laziness of the stand itself. And of course, the user's obscene luck, which makes it appear as just something that gives Poco Loco a good pep talk and cheers him up. Even Rocky hints at the fact that Hey Ya yeah possibly has more than what is on the surface in his Jojo Veller stand comments, with Hey Ya yeah being a stand that only gives Poco Loco more courage, right? The use of a Rocky's question mark is on purpose, showing us that the stand possibly has more underneath the surface than just nice words. And if you enjoyed this video and want to help make more videos like it in the future, I have a Patreon over at patreon.com slash guy. And if you want to have some lovely little guy whisper ASMR sweet nothings into your ear, well, you can simulate that by buying a copy of Shimonetta, Boring World of the Concept of Dirty Jokes Doesn't Exist, and playing the Blu-ray into some sort of earbuds and, like, listening to them while you try to go to sleep, and it's just, it'll just be lovely. It's just, just like that. It's just whispering ASMR right into your ear, but it's all dick jokes.